welcome to the Minnesota Air National Guard Museum. My name is Terry Morris. I was a loadmaster on C-130 Hercules airplanes. I also am a volunteer docent and believe it or not I never knew what a docent was until somebody told me that's just a nice name for a tour guide. My name is Stan. I'm a former naval aviator, a lieutenant in the, uh, in the Navy. Uh, I flew during the Korean War and now I'm the docent uh, tour guide at the, at the uh, museum here. We're delighted to have you here. And I'll tell you a little bit about the, uh, the Air Guard first. Ray Miller, behind me is uniform and the pictures of Ray Miller, a true visionary. He was a pilot around here. He was in the Army Air Force. In 1920, he went out to Curtis Field, which was on Larpenter and Snelling. He rented a Curtis Oriole got the adjutant general and the governor of the state of Minnesota and talked him into flying with him in the Oriole to Washington, D.C. because he wanted to get federal recognition for the Air National Guard. The plane flew at 79 miles an hour and it had a range of 130 miles. So the first stop was all the way to, to uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin. And then he made it to uh, uh, Madison and then to Chicago. It was a harrowing flight to say the least and it took him about a week and a half to get there. And uh, when they got there they landed at the, at the uh, parade field. And he sold Billy Mitchell on the program. We became the first Air Guard charter in the country. And therein sprang the Air National Guard as we know it today. The Air National Guard is a great organization. We have three different missions. We got the active duty mission, we got the state mission, we got the community mission. The mission of the Air National Guard, we're to supplement the active duty Air Force. We also have a state mission. If we have a tornado, uh, if we have a flood, the governor of the state can activate our organization. We also have a community mission. We get out and help different programs in the communities that support our people. This is a very, uh good unit, the 133rd, and they've got a lot of history being the first Air National Guard unit and also all the uh, deployments and such they've been on over the years. One of our fellow pilots was approached by Eve Miller, who's the widow of Ray Miller. Mrs. Miller has got all this wonderful memorabilia of Ray. She conceived the idea of creating a museum to recognize and preserve the history of the Air National Guard and General Miller's artifacts and memorabilia. The Air National Guard Museum is operated by the Minnesota Air National Guard Historical Foundation. We basically are a nonprofit organization. It is our way of preserving and promoting the legacy of the Air National Guard. We are not directly affiliated with the Air National Guard per se, however we work extremely closely with them. Many of the airplanes that you see out here and many of the displays that you see out here were actually preserved or put back together, that sort of thing, by our various volunteers and we have a number of great volunteers that work on these things. One of my former commanders said, Julie, there's a 131 sitting out there. We should have the Red Cross painted on the tail because we used to fly that. So the Red Cross on the C-131 aircraft is to exact design and measurements of the Air Force. In bad weather, cold, got ladders, worked on measuring everything. The volunteers that work here at the museum are very, very talented people. They're Air Force vets and uh, Navy vets and Army guys and so forth. And they're very, very good at what they do. This museum has been a dream for a lot of people. They come out here and they spend hours contributing, putting programs together, getting memorabilia together, properly identifying all the memorabilia that we have, displaying it so that it makes sense to tell the story. The story must be told. I think people can appreciate our program if they hear it from people that have been here. We have an F-89 Scorpion out here. Well, this particular guard unit and also the Duluth Air National Guard unit both flew that particular airplane in the late 50s. These hangars that you're actually in right now were built for that particular airplane. It's called an F-89 Scorpion and it flew during the Cold War. The affectionate name for this airplane was the Lead Sled. It took it a long time to get into the air. This is a, uh, an F-16 Falcon, also called a Viper. It's currently flying in Afghanistan and all over the world. It'll fly about 1,400 miles an hour. 
currently being flown by the Duluth Squadron, and you can see the Bulldog on the tail. This is a Sidewinder, uh, and it's a heat seeker. Uh, it seeks heat like the uh, uh, exhaust system of, of your car or another airplane, of course. So sensitive, I could put you on your bicycle holding a candle, shoot this at you, and it would find you. Those are the types of things that uh, we can share with people and uh, give, give them that kind of understanding. This is the airplane I learned to fly in. Uh, it was a very good airplane. The first one I landed on an aircraft carrier was like this one, with, of course, with a tail hook on it. I had the misfortune of almost shooting myself down in it, and I got it back. But that was kind of exciting, too. It's a great airplane. I really liked it. We do have primarily one exhibition space that has uh, sort of a rundown of the Minnesota Air National Guard and then something on the 133rd as well. And then there's a lot of wandering around the planes outside, having planes that are in such amazing shape and are so easy to interact with are, are really great. And I think most people spend most of their time out there kind of wandering in and about. The museum is normally open from late April through the end of October. We have two Saturdays typically each month in which we basically have permission with the Minnesota Air National Guard so that we can actually bring people from the public in here and they can actually walk around, get up close and personal with the various airplanes, artifacts, what have you in the hangar. We also staff those with people who are knowledgeable in those planes so they can ask questions and not only do they just go up and look at these things, they actually get a chance to get the information about the history and how they're used and get their questions answered. The, the most gratifying thing is working uh, the days when we have open cockpits in special locations with the public. The best part of the whole deal is these little two-year-olds banging up those stairs and getting into that cockpit. Get your army positions! And they're taking off and they're going around the world. It's just fascinating. And there are 1,800 dials and switches in the cockpit. And people are overwhelmed by how complicated it is. How do you ever fly something like this? The groups, the radios, the fire control, the throttles, the, the oil pressure and temperature. And then they begin to understand why we have so many dials. I learned that there are so many buttons that the pilot needs to learn and um, if you push the wrong button it's like, oh no, and stuff like that. There's a lot of buttons and it takes 80 hours almost to learn them all and get comfortable. I'd probably have to make flashcards to remember all the <laughs> buttons. I am the volunteer on the F-89 cockpit sometimes and that's the one that interests the kids because it's a single seat and they are in total control of the world. Oh, I get them up in the airplane, let them sit down in the pilot seat and tell them to buckle up because you can't start the engines without the buckling up. Well, that gets them all excited. And I tell them how about if they pull it back, they take off and when you push it forward, you can dive and kind of just what I can remember. We're open from 9 o'clock in the morning till about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You can find which days those are by going to our website, mnangmuseum.org. You do have to have a valid uh, photo ID, like a driver's license. Free of charge to the public, completely free. In addition to our open cockpit Saturdays, we offer the opportunity for various groups to come in here and see these exhibits. We take them around and give them a guided tour. Typically it's about an hour and a half to two hours and talk about each of the individual exhibits that we have here. We do require one week notice in advance. We do ask for five dollars per person. Those can be scheduled any time throughout the year by anybody. We get birthday parties quite often and believe it or not we get birthday parties not only for young kids, we get birthday parties for old kids too. <laughs> that even happens too occasionally. We've also had several weddings that we've done, some pretty large. So people find it uh, be quite rewarding to be married in front of either our P-51 Mustang as a backdrop, that sort of thing. And we do make those things happen. This is a fantastic place. Uh, and the future of aviation is changing so much. And, uh, and we hope that the museum will be a part of that uh, with the new aircraft that are coming on. And we're coming into an unmanned era uh, of uh, pilotless aircraft and, and things like that. So what the future holds, uh, I can't wait to see it. Come on out and take a look at us.